In this next lesson, we're going to take a look at setting up uh, carrier files uh, within X3. Um, the carrier business partner is a um, is a business partner that we assign on all uh, sales order records, purchase order records, um, delivery records, um, to just to specify in the system who the transportation uh, party is. Um, so you can set up a variety of uh, LTL or uh, small package uh, type uh, carriers within the system. So to set up a carrier, uh, if you go to your common data menu, then once again under our BPs block, we're going to come over here to our carriers. Then just as with our other business partner, when we're defining a new carrier, always remember to come over here and click on the new button. Um, so here uh, up at the top we're going to specify a carrier identification number. Um, there's not an auto sequence uh, that you can uh, auto sequence capability uh, on the carrier so you have to manually define this number. Down here on the identity tab much like on our customer and our supplier files you know we have short titles and acronyms that we can associate with the carrier, the carrier's legal name, uh, country of origin, language for the business forms, federal tax ID number and SIC code, uh, the currency that you do business with the carrier on. Okay. Over here on our addresses tab, once again, just like on the other BPs, we're going to have to establish an address code um, for each address that we set up for the carrier. Uh, corp might be a common address code I'll, I'll see uh, organizations utilize. Main um, is another code. Again, the principle being whatever address code you decide upon, just make sure you're consistent with that address code on all the carriers that you set up. Here's all our address information along with the phone and emails. Um, over here on our management tab. Now, this management um, region and price list tab these three tabs kind of work in conjunction with one another and um, they would be used in cases where you have set fees um, that you get for your, from your suppliers um, from transporting the goods from your warehouse locations to um, certain customer uh, regions. Um, so if you have that type of fixed fee relationship with your supplier and you can bill your customers on a consistent basis based upon those contractual freight rates, you can use these three tabs uh, of, the, or of the carrier file to do that. Uh, so in this case, I have an example set up. Um, uh, the elements to the model, you're going to want to check this priceless management. Okay, you have to define a weight and a volume unit. Then down in this variable pricing block here, um, I have it set up uh, two uh, brackets here. Um, you know, a 100 pound band, then uh, up to a 200 pound band for transportation. Next here on my regions tab, um, I have my info center warehouse located within the U.S. Then over here, I establish two different regions with their associated uh, postal codes. Then finally, here on the price list tab, this is where you can come to define your region. Then in this case, uh, uh, down in the lower section here, define what the respective freight rates are. So in this case, I'm saying up to 100 pounds worth of cargo uh, going you know, from our warehouse to this region in Pittsburgh. Uh, the client would be billed $75. If the cargo was from between 100 and 200 pounds, uh, the client would be billed $68. Okay. Now, these settings here, uh, these are going to work in conjunction. Um, these are, in terms of how this information populates uh, your sales order files, um, it's going to be captured in an invoicing element. Um, the invoicing element is kind of a uh, the charges section that's below the line um, on the sales document. Um, now it's important to note that within X3 you can have multiple um, invoicing elements uh, defined on a sales order uh, to capture a variety of different charges. Uh, freight would be one common one. 
um, a surcharges, uh, maybe a fuel or material surcharge. Um, expedite fees or would be another common uh, use for an invoicing element. Um, but in the context of these freight charges here, what's important to do is to tell the system through your parameter setup what invoicing element is going to be populated with these freight charges. So to do that, um, what you're going to need to do is to come into your parameter values. Uh, these are found under your setup menu under general parameters then parameter values um, then once you're in here what you're going to want to do is to come under this then sales block then we can come under our fo folder level okay in this case this is going to be my seed folder okay I'm going to click down on the parameters per group tray then in here under my invoicing rules section, I have this uh, parameter, this FRENUM carrier invoicing element. So if I go ahead and click on that, I'm going to say, for sake of this discussion, it's going to be my primary uh, invoicing element that I want to have populated with these freight charges. So I can go ahead and set that to a 1. Then go ahead and click on OK. Then do a save then that will go ahead and save my setup for me. Okay, The last couple elements uh, on the carrier file, again, just like on the other BPs, we have a bank ID um, tab where we can capture in the carrier's bank information if that's applicable to your organization. Um, my typical recommendation is um, if you do seek to capture bank ID numbers, whether it be on a supplier file, a customer file, a carrier file in this case, um, make sure that you activity or access code control access to that particular tab so that um, you know that banking account information doesn't fall into unauthorized hands. Um, then finally we also have a contacts tab um, much like the other business partners within the system. Uh, we can also set up and link contacts to our carrier file. Another thing to take note of uh, on the carrier once it's established, if you go ahead and click on that simulation button on the right hand side of the screen, that'll take you into this freight price simulation screen. So in here what this enables for you to do is to come in and find um, what your shipping site is, um, what the postal code is that you're sending the cargo to, um, then over here you can specify the weight of your cargo then click on your apply button and when you do that down here at the bottom of the screen this will ser serve to show you what uh, you know region uh, the cargo is and what the um, you know the charges for the cargo will be so it can be a useful tool you know if you do have that type of uh, fixed freight relationships with your supplier a final thing to note on the carrier file Again, from a reporting perspective, if you want to print out a list of your carriers that you have set up with the next three, if you come over to your printer icon and come down to list, uh, we can choose this first reporting option here for carrier listing. And at this screen here, I don't have a particular carrier defined, so this is going to give me my full range of carriers. I'll come up here and click on the print button and that'll go ahead and return to me this crystal report with all my carriers.